in a car. When you want to stop, you put your foot on the brake pedal. The force you apply gets amplified by a vacuum system, which moves a piston inside the brake master cylinder, in turn sending a hydraulic force to the brake pads, which apply pressure directly to the disc rotor, slowing the wheels. The system relies on friction. Friction between the brake pads and the disc rotor, and friction between the tyres and the road surface. That friction turns the kinetic energy from the moving car into heat energy. So, what happens on a ship where there's effectively no friction between the ship and the water? You've got drag, but there's no way of pressing a brake pedal and dramatically increasing drag in the same way you can with friction in a car. Instead, we have a number of different techniques that we use to slow down ships. First, you can cycle the rudder. Moving the rudder between hard to port and hard to starboard increases drag. The technique relies on moving the rudder without inducing a turn. When you move a rudder, it does take some time for a vessel to begin turning, so you can keep it hard over for a little while. As soon as the turn begins though, you turn the rudder hard the other way. These relatively rapid rudder movements lead to the term high frequency rudder cycling. It slows the ship using only the additional drag created by the rudder itself. Developing that idea further, we move on to low frequency rudder cycling. The idea is you do induce a turn, you want the vessel's drift angle to increase your drag. You'll get the vessel swinging 30, 40 degrees one way before returning to your original heading, reducing the engine power the whole time. As the vessel's momentum is in this direction, the increase in angle leads to a huge increase in drag, rapidly slowing the ship. Low frequency rudder cycling can get a ship to stop within five or six ship's lengths. So on a 300 meter ship, you could stop within a mile or so. Of course, if there are no restrictions with regards to sea room, the next development in stopping with a rudder is to simply go hard over and let it turn. This is known as turning under full helm and is a recognised emergency stopping manoeuvre. It also relies on the increase in drag caused by the angle between the vessel's heading and the direction of momentum. When turning under full helm, it's possible to stop within a couple of ship's lengths, albeit you will be either to port or starboard of your original track, depending on which way you turned. Of course, if you've spotted a last minute hazard up ahead, it can be a very effective way of keeping yourself safe. So we've looked at using the rudder, but what about the engine? We've all seen it in the movies where a ship immediately orders full astern to try and stop. Again, this is a recognized maneuver, it's called a crash stop. A crash stop would probably be my last choice if I had to undertake an emergency maneuver though, simply because it leads to a complete loss of control of the vessel. Putting the engines full astern stops the water flow over the rudder, so you've got no way of steering or correcting a shear. Not only that, but the propeller will have much less of an effect than you would expect. Turning a propeller in the opposite direction to the flow of water kind of creates a vacuum. There's a lot of water coming from this direction, hitting the blades. The blades are trying to push it back, creating a flow in this direction. But in doing so, where can the water now come from? All the water on this side of the prop is moving away, so there's no water for the propeller to propel. So what else could we do with the engines instead? We could just stop them. Again, this is a recognised manoeuvre too, it's called an inertia stop. You literally stop the engines and let the ship drift until it stops moving. As there is still water flow over the rudder, you do maintain some control. The faster the ship, the more control you have, but you're going to lose control as she slows down. The other consideration is that you might need miles and miles of sea room. You're literally only using the drag from the hull to slow the ship. It's really not very efficient. So, on a day-to-day -day basis, what do ships actually do when they want to stop? We've talked about emergency manoeuvres, but we don't do those every day. Instead, what we normally do is known as a controlled speed reduction. It involves a lot more planning ahead, but the idea is you maintain full control of the vessel the whole time. Crossing an ocean, you would be travelling at full sea speed. A good few miles before manoeuvring, you would start to reduce speed, initially dropping the engine to full ahead. This would be marked on your passage plan and is part of the voyage planning process that navigators go through before every passage. As you get closer to your destination, you'll have planned points for speed reduction the whole way in. The idea is that each time, you only need to reduce the power a small amount. You keep the propeller running ahead, maintaining the flow of water over the rudder, giving you full control over the vessel the whole time. Each time you reduce power, 
the drag force applied by the hull through the water becomes greater than the force delivered by the propeller. The overall effect is that the vessel slows down until the force applied by the propeller matches the resistance force due to the speed through the water. A controlled speed reduction takes the overall momentum of the ship and slowly dissipates it using the resistance of the water. Our car, which we talked about at the beginning, can very quickly use friction to transform its kinetic energy into heat. A ship has to slowly use the water resistance instead, gradually slowing down over a number of miles. But what about her anchor? Well, we actually covered that recently, so check out that video and you'll see why they can't be used to stop your ship. And that brings us to the end of today's video. I now publish content like this on the last Friday of every month. To stay up to date every time I upload, be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. Until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.